Hey folks, so uh, this is my fourth time recording this, so hopefully it works this time. Um, as you can see, today I'm talking about the American dream as a myth and how that relates to education in the United States. Um, mainly I'm concerned with who gets to go to college, who gets into college, who graduates from college, and why. Um, first of all, I think we think of a college education as this great equalizer something that puts everyone on the same playing field, um, something that everyone has access to, that everyone can get, as long as you go out and take it. Um, and that's not true for everyone. Not everyone has equal access to education, and even if you do get into college, um, how much money your parents make influences whether or not you'll graduate overall. I mean, this is large-scale statistics speaking. There are exceptions to every rule, but I'm not arguing the exception here. Um, if your parents make over $90,000 a year, you have a 1 in 2 chance of getting a bachelor's degree at the time you're 24. However, if your parents make $35,000 or less a year, you have a 1 in 17 chance of achieving the same thing. And I think that right there is goes against all those arguments that all you need to do is get off the couch and go out and go to school and make something of yourself because it's not my fault how much money my parents had yet it seems to influence whether or not I'm going to graduate from college by the time I'm 24. I'm sure you can say more people are going to school. Um, more people do go to college now than in the 70s and 80s. Um, but who graduates? 66% of high-income students that enroll in college graduate in five years with a bachelor's degree, whereas 41% of low-income students graduate in the same time. Once again, this is based on parents' income. Um, now, college is, who colleges admit also plays a role. Um, by admitting less people, supposedly colleges... Um, they can increase their prestige, get more money. Um, selective admission processes are, are good for colleges in that they they can get more for it. Um, and colleges, it's better for colleges to admit higher income students because they graduate and they're more likely to go on to be successful. I mean, for all the other reasons that I've been arguing in these blogs. But um, a survey of the top 146 colleges in the United States shows that 3% of students are from the bottom fourth of the United States. 3%. And 74% are from the top fourth. So what does that say? That people who are whose parents make a lot of money go to college. Um, let's see what that um, break out this book again. <clears throat> A couple things I want to read from here. Um, we like to call these people um, people at high risk for not graduating or however you want to put it. Um, we use words like disadvantaged or at risk or high risk or students of low socioeconomic status. Um, we really mean to say lower class because um, none of those terms capture the central characteristic of lower class families. I'm reading now. Um, a collection of occupational, psychological, personality, health, and economic traits that interact, predicting performance, not only in schools but in other institutions as well, that on average differs from the performance of families from higher social classes. So what does that say? Um, in the, essentially, there are multiple factors that influence lower class families, and all of those factors, psychological personality, health, economic traits, predict performance in institutions, including school, which I've argued in, um, I think, previous blog posts. Um, I also want to read, inequality of income breeds inequality of education, and the reverse is also true. As long as financial returns on a college degree continue to rise, the upper and upper middle classes are likely to pull farther away from the working and lower classes. So what's that saying is as long as we keep 
placing such a high value on college degrees, the people who can go to college will continue to pull away from the people who can't go to college. And what I'm arguing here is that it's not everyone's fault that they can't go to college. You can't say get off the couch and go to college because as I just showed you, their chances of graduating can be predicted by how much money their parents made. It's not about whether they work hard or they stay up late studying. I mean, and like I said, there's exceptions to the rule, but generally, I mean, 41% of low-income students graduate. And as far as other factors that um, influence this, um, I've already argued about parenting styles in another blog. Um, the health care, there's a gigantic disparity as we, have, we are seeing right now. I think there's a lot of political debate on this um, between the health care of the rich and health care of the poor. I was reading in here somewhere that lower class of kids from lower classes actually have worse vision because of prenatal care and um, partly because of how their eyes are trained as infants. Lower class children have poorer vision than middle class children. If you want the research for that, I can give it to you. Um, but I think that was just crazy to me that class can influence something like that. I mean, that, and that's just an example of how class and the American dream is affected by things that we can't even see, we can't even begin to measure. So keep in mind, for you college students watching this, that not everyone goes to college, not everyone can go to college. Um, so when you don't want to take that exam or study, remember that you're fortunate to have the privilege. Thanks.